Today I'm going to teach you how to make a carbonated mead at home, specifically a low ABV carbonated mead. Now I'm recording this little clip way after the fact. The video you're going to see was done probably three months ago, four months ago, a long time ago. I used a specific honey called Coffee Blossom to make this carbonated low ABV mead. I recorded the whole video really emphasizing Coffee Blossom. In my editing, I realized, but also remembered, I don't want this to all be about one kind of honey. This recipe you're gonna see, the recipe cards you're gonna see on this video are valid for any honey in the universe. You can make any traditional mead carbonated. Just find whatever honey you got. I'm saying this because the whole video, you're gonna hear me talk about Coffee Blossom, which is great. But take the steps you, you get from this video, apply it with whatever honey you got, and make a carbonated mead. It's so my disclaimer, the video is really good, the mead is also very good. I just don't wanna make this all about one kind of honey. So that's my disclaimer, thank you for uh, being here, and enjoy the video. Today, I'm showing you how to make a Coffee Blossom Honey Hydromel, which is a low ABV carbonated mead. It's super good, and I can't wait to share it with you. So let's get started. So I have a few favorite honeys in my time uh, mead making. I've tried pretty much every honey I can get a hold of. One of my favorites is Coffee Blossom. It has some natural, earthy, maybe slight caramely notes, depending on the place you get it. Maybe a little bit of tropical element. Again, all depends on where you get the honey. But this honey is super fun. I'll be sharing my source for where I got my specific honey down below, but I picked up some Coffee Blossom honey. I've already done a Coffee Blossom mead in the past, um, and I'm redoing this video because I want to do it and show you how to make a carbonated version. That version was still, this one's going to be fully carbonated in either a bottle or in a keg. So you'll see both sides today. In fact, I'll show you two recipe cards right here of how to make this at a one gallon size. If you want to up that, you just basically multiply it, everything except for the yeast. You don't have to multiply the yeast by your number, but that's your card, your recipe card for how to make this mead. Now I've made this mead before and it's been very successful. Actually, this little trophy right here is the people's choice from this thing called Grove Fest, which was or is something that happens here in uh, Oklahoma City. Essentially, it's like a homebrew pouring event. And uh, I took my Coffee Blossom mead, which I call uh, a Busy Bees Vice. I even have a little label for it, you'll see. I took that to this little pouring event and it won people's choice, which is pretty cool. People voted and there was probably eight other home brewers there. Very cool to win this. So in this video, I'm going to show you two ways to do this. And it's going to have a fork at one point of where you're going to go. If you're going to bottle carbonate it, you'll kind of take a turn. If you're going to keg carbonate it, you'll take the other turn. So this mead does start with a, a universal beginning, and that is collecting your ingredients, which is your honey, your water, your yeast in this recipe your yeast nutrient, your uh, equipment. If you need that stuff, I've got some equipment links below. You collect all of those things and you sanitize your equipment. You're gonna mix together the honey, water, and yeast. Now you'll notice there's not a lot of honey in this and that's because this is a hydromel strength, meaning it's generally below 7.5% ABV. We only need about a pound and a half of, a pound and a half of honey per gallon. So that's, uh, that's kind of nice, save you some money in the long run. So we go ahead and we mix together, like I said, the honey, water, yeast. We're using the Safel US05, which is a really good beer yeast, but also works well for mead. It's got a lower tolerance of about eight to 12%, but we're going nowhere near the tolerance level of this thing. We mix together all of that stuff and we take a hydrometer reading with a hydrometer. So the hydrometer reading float, or hydrometer floats in a tube or some cup where it will float. You're gonna record the number on the side. This is gonna float at about 1.050 to 1.055, roughly. You then add that liquid back in, 
Add your yeast. I didn't just mention this, but we're actually gonna add our yeast nutrient up front. Because this is a lower ABV mead, we don't necessarily have to step feed it or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all of my yeast nutrient at the beginning when I pitch the yeast. So, you, so you'll see both of those things. The extra thing you'll see me add here that you don't have to necessarily, but it does help, is a um, wine tannin. Now I'm using a special wine tannin called citrus, uh, it's a citrus blanc wine tannin, but you can use just regular wine tannin. Something like that will help to fill out the mouth feel of this brew. So we add a very small amount of wine tannin. It's in the recipe cards, as you saw. And again, close it up, let it start fermenting. This is gonna ferment really fast. Like I'm talking maybe two weeks at max. The fermentation will fly through this honey does not clear very well. So my brew was uh, done, and I knew that by taking your gravity reading, but it wasn't clear. So I'm not using the clear factor as a factor for me to actually rack it. I did go ahead and rack it once I noticed it was done fermenting, and I felt like there was a little bit of yeast cake at the bottom, or sediment. We racked it with an auto siphon and tubing into a new container. You'll notice that I'm doing a big bucket, not a one gallon here, um, that's because I have the ability to, and I'm making a larger batch of this mead. I'm actually taking it to another pouring event um, in the future. Maybe I'll get myself another trophy here. Now this is where the fork in the road occurs because we've racked our mead out of primary, we took a gravity reading, we noticed that it was probably at 1.000 because again, the ABV of this is low and the yeast can easily consume that amount of sugar. Here's the fork. If you want to bottle carbonate it, we're gonna go this way. If you want to keg carbonate it, let's go this way. So bottle carbonating requires uh, keeping the yeast that are in the brew there, meaning that we don't wanna like stabilize it or anything. So we're gonna go ahead from this point, two weeks in, I know it's very young at this point, since I've racked it, there's still active yeast in here and I need them for bottle carving, I am going to add a non-fermentable sweetener to back sweeten this brew. Specifically non-fermentable because we don't want the fermentation to kick up again because of it. So we add a non-fermentable sugar like erythritol. You see that on this bottle carbonation card. You can use any other one out there, but just make sure it's non-fermentable. There's a list of them, you'll see. And you're also gonna add priming sugar. Now I'm using dextrose as, as my priming sugar. However, there's a whole list of priming sugars too. Use a calculator to figure out how much priming sugar you need for the volume of mead that you have. After you've got your, your calculation from the calculator, add your priming sugar with your non-fermentable sugar, mix that up, and you're gonna go ahead and immediately bottle. The bottling process is easy as putting it into the bottle cap, in this circumstance. Do not use corks because we're using carbonated meads, so corks would just fly out in that circumstance. Unless you had cages, but we're not gonna go there. Now with the bottle carved, could I have let it set for another week or two to clear up? Yeah, I could go ahead and do that. You just wanna make sure there's yeast still in the brew. So it could be another two weeks later, but just don't clear it so much that you drop out every bit of yeast in your brew. Um, otherwise, it's not gonna bottle carb. It will actually end up being pretty clear here. And you'll see this when I pour this bottle, this thing is a pretty clear mead, even despite me bottling it not clear. Let's go back to our road. We took our fork. We Now we're gonna go back real fast. Let's go to the keg carbonated side. We're gonna go ahead and stabilize this with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite or pasteurized because we don't need the yeast anymore. We're done with them. They've done their job. Thank you, yeast, but we're done with them. So we're gonna go ahead and stabilize or pasteurize. Pick your choice. And then we're gonna back sweeten with coffee blossom honey because I have, uh, you're hopefully gonna have some extra to be able to back sweeten. So I normally back sweeten with about a half a pound to a pound per gallon. And I know that seems like a lot, it kinda is, but it, it really helps to amplify the sweetness level there of the coffee blossom. Well, once we stabilize, we wait about 24 hours. We then back sweeten with coffee blossom honey. It's gonna totally jack up all of the clarity, which is just the way it's gonna go for right now. 
You can also decide on both of these, I forgot to mention with the bottle carb, you can also add some, um, some things like citric acid, acid, malic acid, stuff like that to adjust your acid level if you would like to do that. I actually take and add a, a blend of citric and malic just a little bit to both of these, bottle carb and to the keg. We mix all of that up and because we can actually clear this thing and we don't have to worry about uh, any re-fermentation, we're gonna go ahead and clear it. I'm using Sparkaloid, which is a really nice uh, clearing agent. There's a bunch of other ones. Essentially add your, your clearing agent, let it work for the 24 to 48 hours it needs, and then we go ahead and keg it. It's also important to say, I forgot to say, use uh, your hydrometer one last time, take a final gravity reading. This is gonna set, for me, my final gravity is about 1.030 or 1.025 in that realm. So both of these are gonna be about 6.5% ABV. The keg carb side, there is a video on how to do it. I'll show you two videos. There's a, a one gallon video on how to use a one gallon keg. And then I have a larger five gallon keg setup that you can also check out. Those videos if you wanna learn how to keg carbonate. So we've done both of these. I'm ready to go get a taste of each one. So let's go ahead and get pours of each one of them. All right, so one thing that's actually a little funny about this is in my right hand is the keg carved. It's not as clear as the bottle carved in actuality. Box, the <laughs> bottle carved is actually clearer, which is interesting. Both full of carbonation. It's harder to tell in the kegged version, but they're both carbonated. The difference in flavor and taste when you do bottle carb versus keg is that honey, the back sweetening sugar. Because this is erythritol, it has its own sli uh, slight flavor profile you're gonna get. And honey, of course, is honey. Tastes like whatever you added in there. So let's go ahead and start with the bottle carbonated version right here. Lots of carbonation. It does have a smidge of yeastiness because the yeast were still apparent in the brew. They still did their thing. So that kind of leads to a little bit of that flavor profile, even though I've tried to do my best to not get the, the sludge at the bottom. The coffee blossom honey is still somewhat retained, even though post-fermentation honey can be zapped. The sugar does help. Erythritol does help, does have the flavor, the slight, bit of malic citric acid does add some lift. It's very crushable. That's very good. I like this. Let's hop on over to the kegged version. Kegged version. I do prefer this one because it has a much more apparent coffee blossom taste because we used coffee blossom to back sweeten on the kegged version. Same carbonation level, a little bit of a bigger mouth feel because honey also adds some density to this, so it has a bigger body. It does have all the same flavors, coffee blossom, malic, citric acid, also helpful in there. The tannin, which is used in both of these, adds, again, that lifting body sort of feel. If I had to choose between the two, if I had my total control to choose one, it would be the kegged one represents the coffee blossom honey a little bit better, continues to pronounce that profile. It's very good. And I think it'll clear up with a little bit of time, but we'll see. So this has been a coffee blossom hydromel, bottle carb versus the, of course, just kegged. Fun thing about this, you can use any other kind of honey in the whole world. You could do this with your local wildflower. You could do this with your buckwheat honey. Whatever you wanna do, go and make a hydromel version. And with hydromels, you kind of have to, uh, to carbonate them. The lack of carbonation will make it feel watery. So carbonation lifts that up and makes it feel less watery. Now you could also do this as a standard strength, which I'll have a video on a standard strength coffee blossom mead, which has some different elements like oak, for example. These are not oaked, but I don't think they need to be. So. Standard strength has some different stuff. That's like between uh, nine and 13. And then if you went sack strength, which is like 14 and above, that's a whole nother game. Regardless, go try this with whatever honey you have. You don't have to just use coffee blossom, although I highly recommend it. 
and uh, let me know what you do. Let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear some uh, stories, good or bad, you know, whether or not it goes well or not. I'm curious. And I hope to see you in a future video. Please hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 75,000 subscribers for uh, 2024. Almost at 2023, that's crazy. We're gonna get there, but we need your help. So I hope you'll join us. Go watch some more content, comment below, and I'll see you in the future with another video. With that, cheers.